Hi, Brooke Jack here. Welcome to the Joy Prescription Podcast. We're so glad you're here. We've got an enlightening episode to share with you today, but before we jump into our interview, I wanted to introduce our guest, Cameo Snyder, by sharing a bit of her bio. When we sat down to record with Cameo, our conversation took off and we were having so much fun, we managed to bypass the introduction part. So let me share that with you now. Cameo Snyder is a functional medicine nutritionist with 25 years of clinical experience restoring metabolic and cellular health, correcting gut imbalances, mitigating inflammation, and resolving biotoxin illness. She has successfully treated thousands of patients while serving as chief of the largest nutrition clinic in the USAF Medical Center, developing and publishing evidence-based nutrition programs for metabolic diseases. She taught at both Old Dominion University and the Culinary Institute of Virginia Medical Nutrition Therapy and Culinary Nutrition. In 2023, after walking alongside her close friend's battle with cancer, she shifted gears to support women's recovery from cancer, launching the Cellular Reboot, Seeing the Hand of God in Every Cell. Now, let's jump right into today's episode. You know, I'm just delighted that you um, offered this opportunity to me because it's just fun to be able to talk about what I do and, and share the similarities and differences in our practices. And so this is super fun. So I'm going to step way back oh, to um, my, what my first career was in finance. And so when I finished a business college right after high school, I went into finance for 10 years and I found that I was miserable behind a desk. I'm such a people person really and so I was taking a jazzercise class oh, I love <laughs> yes <that>. jazzercise <laughs> and I ended up teaching jazzercise for 16 years oh, but geez. this gal that was my jazzercise instructor I mean this was in the heyday late 80s where jazzercise was just you know off the charts and fun and there was you know there could be up to you know hundreds of people in a class and my instructor's name was Donna Jones. I remember her name, if you can believe it or not. And um, she would talk about nutrition all the time in class and the importance of nutrition. And I thought, this is really interesting. So I wasn't happy with the what I was doing professionally. And I thought, I'm going to look into this. So I went to the local community college and I looked up what a nutritionist does and how much do they get paid? Because I, you know, I need to get, I need to earn an income, right? And so I took a nutrition class and that nutrition class, the instructor um, was not great. And I talked to her on the side and I just said, you know, what do you think about this profession? And she was like, this is not a good profession to get into. <laughs> It's super discouraging. And I thought, no, I'm going to step forward. So I did. And I ended up, you know, moving on to, you know, I graduated from UC Davis in California. And I got through my degree very quickly because it was my, you know, it was my second career. And um, then I moved very quickly into very large scale operational things because I was more of an adult moving into this profession. And so I worked for both um, the California State Mental Health Department. And then I moved to the Department of Defense. And I also did like little small jobs with like an HIV resource center and just as much kind of broad range experience as I could get. But really, my career launched when I moved to the Department of Defense and I ran a nutrition clinic for one of the largest military institutions um, for the Air Force hospitals. And so did a ton of research there with, with uh, metabolic disorders and that kind of stuff. And then I met a sailor and I moved to the East Coast. <laughs> And I thought I was going to move into this great position, running a clinic, doing research, kind of continuing what I was doing. And God had completely different plans for me. And um, I went into, dove into functional medicine in 2013 when I came here. And mm -hmm. I taught at the university and taught at a culinary institute just because I was so hungry 
for learning about the digging more into the physiology of the body and how our food systems kind of play in together with that and you know why are you know disease rates continuing to soar and so that's a little bit of the background and through that process is how I founded initially um, started with cooking up fitness and then I transitioned into the cellular reboot and dove more deeper into cellular health yeah Thing. so you've got a master's in public health is that right in yes and, yes and you're also a dietitian mm -hmm. and you went to a culinary institute <laughs> as well you have just such an amazing diverse background love it yeah yeah it's been fun it's it's been a hunger mm -hmm. it's yeah. been a hunger and I want to say more recently in 2019, when my very dear friend was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, that is when the Lord opened up cellular physiology to me and brought me into the, the internal workings mm -hmm. and opened up this window that I never really completely understood before about our internal engineering and how he's the center of all of it, you know, DNA, God mm -hmm. molecule, the uh -huh. fire in the center of our being, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of when really things started opening up and I found truly why I was created and the direction that God divinely had for me in this life. So these last couple of years have been really uh, fulfilling, mm -hmm. you know? I love it. it's such it's so such a privilege to watch somebody you know going on their journey to where you know God has uniquely called them. It, it's an adventure, <laughs> isn't it? Um, yeah, I was um, when how did you know when when God tapped you on the shoulder and said you know to veer off the conventional path that you had planned for yourself? Well, it was, it was definitely a process. It was bringing me to my knees um, during the time of supporting my friend and the Lord's the Lord very clearly showing me that I am the healer and you are my helper. Mm -hmm. And I had had such great success with shifting metabolic status and helping people renew their, their bodies and, I mean, reverse diabetes and, you know, I mean, I could go on and on and on in terms of what I had done in the past and being able to shift and restore. And I could see shifting and restoring, but it kept coming, her, her tumor kept coming back more vicious and with a vengeance. And at that period of time, the Lord showed me that there was a spiritual side of the attack, of the toxic attack on her body that was not being looked at or addressed. And it wasn't being looked at addressed on the functional side or the Western medicine side of, of the process. Mm -hmm. And so when that door opened, then it was kind of a leading me through the path of understanding that there is an, a demonic association here that was attacking as well and that ultimately it was about us surrendering completely and totally to the lord in order for him to either restore or bring in her case bring her into heaven yeah. and that was that was 100 percent his choosing and accepting of that. I love that God has brought us together. Cameo, we are on parallel paths in terms of discovery and just how God does reveal his fingerprint in our bodies, in our physiology, in our DNA, in the cellular health. And he has also recently shown me just more layers of, of why we get sick and how how he's equipped us to heal on all levels and in, including that ultimate healing that happens when we're 
whole and complete in him um, in the next life. And so um, right. what a beautiful journey to walk with your friend. Yeah. It just revealed the layer of toxicity that I was unaware of the, the, the strength and the, the truly the spiritual association of that attack. And so she was a hairdresser for, she was my hairdresser for over 20 years. I mean, she, um, they don't say hairdresser anymore. They say hairstylist or hair artist, which she was <laughs> truly an artist, but she was my, she was my dear friend. And, um, I was unaware of the level of biotoxin accumulation in her body that had taken place over all those years and was unrecognized. And she also had Lynch syndrome, which is a, um, which is a mutation in that mismatch repair gene. So if you think about it, she was born with that mutated gene and she had just this onslaught of toxic exposure for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that from a perspective of, or, or a God forwards perspective, I mean, he, he kept her well and healthy for all that time. He was protecting her. I, I would love for you to just share more. You have such a unique perspective into toxicity and in the layers of how we heal from environmental toxicity mental thought processes, the spiritual toxicity um, that you mentioned as well. So give us a framework of just how you view toxicity and how you walk through addressing that with uh, people on their journey. Yeah. So um, I see toxicity as being toxins being three different categories. Mm -hmm. So you have your internal toxins, which are, um, mold and fungus and parasites and heavy metals that are all, you know, releasing toxins into the bodies like ethanols and aldehydes. And those are internally attacking cellular physiology, cellular signaling, the um, biochemical reactions that take place in the cells. So you have those internal toxins that are attacking the internal physiology. Then you have external external toxins that are things like, I mean, billions of pesticides that are being poured on our food and in our, that are in our soil, that are in our water, that's in our air. And then we have this whole 5G, you know, low lying radiation exposure that we're all exposed to. And then, I mean, you can't walk into a big box store without inhaling microplastics. Mm -hmm right? They're in everything. So as we take those external toxins, they're causing internal disruption in our physiology. Mm -hmm. And then the third category of toxins is the emotional and the spiritual toxins. Mm -hmm. And the emotional and spiritual toxins are much to do with these emotional thoughts and feelings um, that attack our mind. Um, so if we think about um, anxiety and depression and fear and worry, mm -hmm. right? So that is that that emotional toxicity that drives toxic behaviors like excessive alcohol and drug abuse and all of these things that are so prevalent, you know, in our society today. And if you're not looking at that external or those three together you're really missing the fullness of what toxins are doing to us so if you take that down into a a deeper layer where did where did toxins come from from the beginning right it was when eve reached for the apple and brought the toxin into humanity and then the layers of toxicity have been building and building and building. And there's such a spiritual demonic presence that's associated with that. Because if you think about, I mean, go back to Moses on the mountain with God and where he is in the brilliant light of God. And then he goes down off the mountain, right? <laughs> with the 10 commandments. 
And when he was in the presence of God and came down, he would have to wear a veil mm -hmm. because he was glowing <laughs> with the brilliance and the presence of God, right? And then you fast forward into Matthew 17, where Jesus takes um, Peter, James, and John up to the mountaintop, and he moves into his resurrected body. And in the scripture says he turned into the brilliance of the sun, where he is with Elijah's, Elijah and Moses, right? And you've got that brilliant light. And then you move into Jesus is crucified. And in the book of Acts, we are given the spirit of God into our body, internal to us, that is now radiating from 37 trillion cells in our body that carry the beauty and the light of God. It makes sense that evil would bring in toxicity. Mm -hmm to begin to dampen and cover that light. Mm -hmm. And what you see is, or what I hear when people reach out to me, believers and non-believers, right? People that come out is that when toxins begin to enter and take over their internal physiology and the functions of their body and they're fatigued and they have gut issues and they have you know, all these miserable symptoms, it's distancing them from the creator. It's distancing them from joy, which is what this podcast is about. And joy is the center of our being. It was we were created for was relationship and joy. Yeah. Definitely. And Definitely. so we're in a battle. <laughs> I could not agree more. I, I, I love <laughs> the way that your mind works because I ponder these things as well. And when I think about sickness, it, it all, ultimately, it all does come down to the fall and sin, you know, human greed in the form of big, you know, agriculture and um, big pharma and all, all the, the forces that are trying to deliver products to humanity that aren't serving us that you know all the pesticides and additives and chemicals and um you know that that does just uh break down our bodies in ways that you know we don't necessarily perceive but um yeah so it, it comes down to to greed and the fallen world that we live in and so um yeah how do you walk people through a process of peeling back those layers is it is you know they're all this giant web of interconnected toxins you know, that the emotional and spiritual you know toxins that you mentioned with you know worry and fear and anxiety that impacts our physiology when we have cortisol, you know, high, high cortisol, then that, you know, skews our sex hormones and our blood sugar, <clears throat> and that can make us irritable. And, you know, it's just this kind of vicious um, snowball effect that can happen. So how do you, how do you intervene, especially when, when someone's struggling on, on so many levels? Yeah. I show a picture of our metabolic map which looks like a construction map of all these pathways, right? And I simply talk about how toxins go in and they impact internal engineering. Like if you look at the steroid pathway and how BPAs and endocrine disruptors are going in and they are attacking the cell and causing disruption in how the cell functions. So, you know, initially just providing some basic education about how the exposures that we're all exposed to are literally causing internal damage that is blocking these pathways, mm -hmm. that is opening up the door for sickness and depending on the level of sickness, 
I just got off the phone with one of my patients, um, stage four prostate cancer, and um, was talking about, you know, I, I said to him, you know, if you were if you were talking to somebody or wanting to deliver a message about the importance of the work that we're doing together, what would you say? He said, what I would want people to know is that if your cells are aren't healthy, you can't get well. Mm -hmm. And so number one, you've got to, you've got to test, you've got to look. Yeah. And in my practice, I do cellular nutrition testing, which looks at the nutrition status in the cell over the last six months. So it's a little bit like a hemoglobin A1C looking at blood sugar response in the body. You know, they look at what, two to three months, hemoglobin A1C, the cellular nutrition assay looks at six months to see what is the status in the cell to look at because every biological every chemical reaction that takes place in the body requires vitamins minerals amino acids protein instructive genes right in order to run these pathways and so if your cells are starving for nutrition then it's impossible to get well mm -hmm. so we talk about those things usually in the beginning of the process and you know, most people do want to test and do want to see what that internal, what what's actually taking place in their body. And then we move forward from there. And then as we move through the process, the spiritual side comes in because their self-doubt comes in and worry comes in and fear and the, that messaging of you're never going to be well and you're spinning your wheels and you know, we use a lot of supplements in our practice, let's be honest, and these supplements don't work. And so you have to combat that with helping people understand that they are getting messaging to start looking at their thoughts and capturing their thoughts and understanding what of these thoughts is actually truth. And what are these thoughts might be coming from the enemy that doesn't want you to heal. Mm -hmm. And so biblical affirmations are very common. Um, I give people a list of biblical affirmations or they can create their own that help through the journey. Um, but as you well know, detoxification is not a 21 day smoothie or <laughs> exercising or drinking enough water. <laughs> Yeah. Right. It's far more complex than that. And I have gotten kind of in conversations with people where they're like, well, your body's naturally designed to detoxify. And I said, yes, with Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when we fell, we started to have these genetic mutations, right, in our genes that can impair our ability to appropriately detoxify things out of our body. And you know, this has been thousands of years in the making. Mm -hmm. So everybody's everybody is so beautifully designed originally. Your genetic blueprint is was originally the same, but how we have mutated over the time has shifted and changed. And so we are as individual from each other as our fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Cameo, talk to us about how you define true detoxification, because there are a lot of, um, you know, misconceptions like you were alluding to about detoxification. So tell us what that truly means to you, um, how that works, why it's critical for our bodies and, um, you know, maybe share a few, um, key nutrients that support the body's natural detoxification process. Right. So when I move somebody through detoxification, the, the first step is you have to support the body first, because you can't just throw on a bunch of Corella and heavy metal binders without toxins recirculating in the body. So if your liver, your kidneys, your lymphatic system, you know, if you're constipated and you're not having daily bowel movements, right? If you've got clogged up pathways, 
then there's no way that you're going to be able to detoxify without making yourself sick. And a lot of times people hurt and have these really negative reactions. And the reason why is because their body wasn't prepped first. Mm. So in the assays that we do, we look at cellular nutrition status. We're able to look at every vitamin, every mineral, every amino acid in the body. One of the powerhouse detoxifiers in the body is glutathione, which requires glycine and cysteine amino acids in order to properly be be created and built in the body so we we look at all those first uh in the process to make sure that the body is prepared and then we provide support for the systems that are required for detoxification so that's step number one you got to prep the body first and then you've got to know what are you removing <laughs> right, right. So not it's not blind. like oh i need to detox yeah. well yeah from what <laughs> all right do you have mold in your body or do you have fungal issues in your body or do you have heavy metals in your body or do you have parasites in your body parasite testing is there's really no tests that really show parasites well you just kind of have to go in and do you know challenges with parasites everybody has parasites let's just be honest we all have parasites to some degree in the body so, so the next step would be, you've got to look and see what are you pulling out? And then you step forward in terms of balancing inflammation, removing the inflammation, supporting the immune system, um, and then putting the key players on board to remove the toxins that are in the body. You know, some people remove mold just great. They have great genetics to remove mold and other people don't. And some people you know, struggle getting rid of BPAs and glyphosates that are in their body. So you kind of have to address what's in the body. Mm -hmm. And then you said key nutrients, right? Right. Well, that's super loaded question, right? Because if we think about genetics um, in my practice, and I'm not sure um, if you do in your practice as well, I do uh, genetic testing for nutrition genetic testing specific yeah. so we look at um, methylation um, in terms of you know how your body is moving through the methylation process which requires critical b vitamins right you need b3 b6 b9 b12 and then your minerals associated and if you have a mutated gene like i have a pretty significant B12 mutation. And I just couldn't get my B12 levels up. And I was, you know, when I did my methylation, looked at my methylation work, I was a very slow methylator. So it wasn't until I started doing injectable B12 shots intermuscular that I was able to get proper absorption and get the nutrients into my body. So if we look at what vitamins and minerals are necessary to detox, Again, that's very different for everybody. And that's why we do the cellular assays to understand specifically what that individual needs in order to properly detox. Mm -hmm. And then let's just talk about our food system and feel free to chime in. Everybody wants a, a powder or a quick and easy, you know, what do I need to clean my body out? And, you know, then they're running to Chick-fil-A and Starbucks and we're not eating nearly the amount of nutrients that are needed for our bodies to properly function in the way that our traditional sad diet is. Yeah. And then, you know, organic food is expensive for a lot of people and so they're eating a lot of foods that are heavily sprayed with pesticides and they're eating genetically modified foods that are full of glyphosates and it's just it's a it's a bit of a train wreck mm -hmm. um but the the light of the story here is that there are things that you can do and there are good products out there there's you know a lot of um you know in terms of powders there's greens that are made with organic ingredients that's a great step mm -hmm. um there's little you know small little tricks that you could put a ton of vegetables in a blender you know and and get a good amount into your body 
Um, but it really is making healthy food a priority. Mm. And my philosophy is, is that cancer and disease is expensive. Mm. <laughs> Treatment will break you. I've seen it. I mean, my friend spent uh, probably $200,000 easy on treatments during that three-year battle. An astronomical amount of money was spent during that process. And, you know, if I could encourage people who are watching this to shift your financial um thoughts or or uh, importance to food choices mm -hmm. it's far less expensive to do that than to face something catastrophic mm -hmm. yeah and it, like we talked about cameo um previously when we were just getting to connect for the first time is making these kinds of changes and reprioritization isn't comfortable, right? There's um, discomfort that has to be embraced in changing habits and shifting mentalities and things like that um, in order to take care of the body well. So how do you encourage people who you know, maybe come to you initially, they recognize something's going on, they know they need the deeper work, but they're stuck in that place of, I don't know if I want to do this. This is hard. This sounds hard. This feels hard. And this is going to take more time than I really want it to. How do you help them get past that place of, of stuck into forward momentum? Yeah, that is a really good question, because if you look at the spectrum of who I see, you know, over here are those people who are ready and they're they're on it. They're they're going to do everything absolutely that's needed because they want to move through the process quickly and they're going to face some of the struggles along the way and tackle those as they go, because that's their personality type. Then I have people over here who the thought of taking, you know, replacing stomach acid, which is one of the very first things I do in my practice is check stomach acidity. You know, you don't put brand new gas in a car that's not running. <laughs> if your stomach acidity is poor, you're not absorbing nutrients. <laughs> And the thought of, you know, of taking a couple pills before a meal to help replenish stomach acid can be overwhelming and what makes you know both Cindy and I different in our practices is that we look at people individually I believe and we're more vested probably in them getting well in the process and so if somebody comes to me and they're struggling in that process and we're moving forward too fast, we start micro moving forward mm -hmm. yeah. because it's more important for me, for them to have success than for me to push them through a program quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, people do need a little bit of encouragement and a little bit of support and pushing, but they also, you need to understand what their boundaries are. Mm -hmm. and what they can do. And so I'm really flexible with that in terms of when I work with clients mm -hmm. and that limits how many people I can see, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd rather work with somebody who is ready and committed. And if you're not there yet, then there's things that you can do on your own. And I do have those conversations. Like if you're not ready yet, then, you know, maybe... I'm going to give you some things that you can work on, you know, over the next couple of months. And then when you're ready to take a, a bigger step or a bigger leap, then it's time for us to step forward in that process. That's wonderful. Yeah. What a great show of compassion and just recognition that everybody's at a different spot in their journey and just recognizing, like you said, those boundaries and meeting people where they're at 
is, is really important um, because ultimately it's their healing journey. Right. <laughs> and, um, and I love that you mentioned the micro moments um, in the, the journey and, and celebrating and recognizing those. Cause that's huge as well. Embracing celebration in our lives and pausing to say, look at this progress that's been made. And, um, you know, that brings joy and uh, encouragement and helps us keep going. Yeah. And that has to be a part of every step along the way, even celebrating the struggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Point. <laughs> yes. Be thankful in all circumstances. Right. That's, uh, that's our encouragement right. <laughs> from the world. Right. Cause it's yeah. an opportunity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Looking for the, the silver lining, even in the, the hard things. Cameo, I'd love if you would just share maybe a few of the practical steps that you give to people that maybe aren't ready to launch into a big, uh, full process. Um, what are some micro changes that you can share with our listeners of things we can implement on our own? One of the most important uh, aspects that I see is the, the, the cellular nutrition status of the body and stress mm -hmm. is huge problem in our society. Everybody is stressed and stress directly impacts stomach acidity. Mm -hmm. And so when your stomach acid is poor, which people think they have GERD, they think it's, you know, their stomach acid is too high. That's usually not the case. <laughs> what do we do we give them a proton pump inhibitor to poison the, the uh, pumps yeah. that make stomach acid yeah and that's the old dr liebert <laughs> <laughs> no more right? let's, just, let's just give them something to block that acid and make them really sick right mm -hmm. <laughs> So typically one of the first things that I have them focus on is diet and stomach acid restoration. So if they don't want to take a stomach acid replacement um, that you can buy over the counter, um, then what they can do is they can just start doing a little bit of an apple cider vinegar, a um, little tiny bit, never drinking straight, always with water, by the way, cut it with a little bit of sweetener if you need, or a little bit of orange, um, I love apple cider vinegar with a blood orange. It's always like yummy. Anyway, <laughs> take that before the meal and that starts to kind of help your body get the stomach acid back into a normal state so that you can actually begin to absorb nutrients. Because if you think about the stomach, the gallbladder and the pancreas and the liver, they live in a cul-de-sac. <laughs> <laughs> And there's cellular signaling and conversations going on with all of them, right? And so when your stomach acid is poor, you're also not releasing proper digestive enzymes. So it is really that important starter place to start. And then diet, 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 right? The sugar is in everything, everything. We're putting sugar in everything. It's in, it's, you, fresh salsa has sugar in it lunch meats have sugar in it so it's starting to really target the areas in your diet where you can begin to shift so you know you can look at your diet overall and go man my cupboards are filled with boxed foods and i don't need all these snack foods in my house i can start replacing that simply with fruits and vegetables right mm -hmm. or i don't eat nearly enough uh greens so maybe I'm just going to focus on adding a vegetable and committing to have a vegetable every night at dinner and making that commitment. It's these simple shifts, these small little changes that add up to significant progress. So, you know, it, it's eating out less, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's deciding to have that family meal in the home that not only is physiologically better for you in terms of the ingredients that you're getting but it's emotionally better because now you're connecting back with your family mm -hmm. and how many people are sitting at the dinner table 
hands together, praising the Lord for the graciousness of all the gifts that he gives us on a daily, nightly basis. Mm -hmm. So it's that, it's that, it's that coming together of not only the, the physical side, but the spiritual side, the, the, the joy that we receive from those little shifts. And if you can't do it every night, I can't do it every night. Kids are doing this and they're doing that. And right. I get that. I was there. I'm well beyond those days, but <laughs> I was there. Um, but you can do it once a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. What does it take to do something like that once a week? Intentionality is the, is the big word. I am curious if you could take a few minutes to share your insights about prayer and fasting and that connection with our cellular regeneration and metabolic, metabolic health. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, so important. So I think about prayer and fasting and I think about how amazing God stitched us together in the womb and he created us in a way that he gave us exactly what we need in our internal engineering to remove toxins and to heal mm -hmm. and that is fasting mm -hmm. right fasting's talked about over 70 times in the bible and it's not fasting and prayer is not just about the building and the strengthening of that relationship with the Lord, but there is a physical component as well called autophagy and autophagy is the self cleaning of the cell. So, you know, just really basically when you go into a fasting state, you're starving the cell of protein and the cells going, wait a minute. I'm struggling. I need to fix my DNA. So what, right? So what happens is the cell starts taking the junk out. So I'm almost thinking of like a cartoon character that's throwing all the garbage out, right? Out of the cell. And so in that process, the cell throws out all the garbage to save itself. And if it can't, it implodes, right? Apoptosis, cell death. And so fasting, during a period of fasting, usually between, um, let's see, it's what, 17 hours is kind of when we start that process. So 17 to 48 hours is like that strike zone where your body goes through the most powerful steps of autophagy and does that self-cleaning cycle. And so just by simply keeping fasting as a part of a habit is critically important for keeping your body at a really healthy state and cleaning out the cells. That is incredible. <laughs> absolutely. Isn't incredible. that incredible? Our creator gave us everything absolutely that we needed to heal. Mm -hmm. And he talks about in Leviticus, you know, that's one by one, uh, you know, book in the Bible. People are like, oh, let me just skip over that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's a, that's true <laughs> but Leviticus is so important for understanding the the toxic exposures and how to identify them and what we need to do to remove them from our body mm -hmm. and so early on in the bible god is giving us the exact tools that he created and is showing us these toxic exposures that are disrupting his divine creation. See, I enjoy prescription in my acrostic is intermittent fasting. So we're- Oh, I love it. Same page about that. I would love to hear from you, Cameo. What would you say is a part of your personal joy prescription? Give us a, just a, a quick um, rundown of the things that have been really instrumental for you in shifting your health and, and helping you stay connected to God and, and your joy? Such a great question. Such a great question. 
Um, and I love the name Joy Prescription um, because that makes it so individual mm -hmm. for each and every one of us. And so my Joy Prescription is going to be very different from somebody else's. And my Joy Prescription has come over a period of time and understanding and opening up the door to truly hear the word of God and how he wants to transform and shift my life. And that's taken a long time, <laughs> over 50 years. That's not for everybody. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying it's very individual, but it's for me, it's coming to a place where you've, where you clearly have understood and see what your divine purpose is in this life and waking up every day with a commitment to that purpose brings me joy every single day because God created us for a reason yeah. and we all have spiritual gifts beautiful spiritual gifts that are all different and what make us unique and we're going to be able to see those I think more even vividly in the kingdom when we're together um, and we are here at this place in time to develop those gifts and when you understand what they are and you begin to utilize them that fulfillment that you feel in your spirit is absolutely soars. Mm -hmm. It absolutely soars. Love it. it. Connecting with your divine purpose and, and tuning into the word of God. I love it. Why don't you share with our listeners how they can reach out to you, learn more about your work and, and connect. So I am actually licensed in North Carolina because um, Virginia does not license dietitians. Uh -huh. um, we are registered here, but we are not licensed. And I, because I live so close to the border of North Carolina, I do work um, in your state. Well, how about that? <laughs> So I have a website, it's called the cellular reboot, um, dot com, and that's usually how people connect with me. There's a, there's a link in there that you can put your name and send me a little note and how you found me and what you might be interested in. And then you can, I'll send you a note back and it's not an AI automated response. It's cameo sitting at her computer and <laughs> and responding to you and um yeah yeah so that's a great way to reach out um and even just to have a beautiful you know talk about jesus i'm open to all of it so oh, well that's wonderful but the cellular reboot.com yeah awesome. awesome well thank <laughs> you so much for your time cameo and sharing your your passion and your purpose and enjoy with us. It's just been a, a delightful conversation, encouraging to me and um, just inspiring. So thank you so much. You are such a light of God and what you are doing for your, for your clients, for your patients, for your listeners, how you're stepping into uh, a deeper fulfillment in your own practice is inspiring. And I know that God brought us together for this divine reason. Mm -hmm. And so I just can't wait to hug you in person. Oh. <laughs> <Yay. so> <laughs> You're well. in good company with huggers here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. Nothing like a deep enriching hug, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Cameo. Bye everyone. You're welcome. Yes. Bye everyone. Have a great day.